Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio Freedom Slips.com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener supported radio station where, if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. We're also simulcasting tonight, as always, on No Borders Radio at noborgersradio.co.uk, right here on tammypepperman.org. If you'd like to donate, please do so to our Tamworth Web Development co.uk. You can do that right on our home pages at tammypepperman.org and clicking on the donate button. Thanks to Tamworth Web Development and No Borders Radio and Ben. Everybody, we're here. Wow. Okay, so finally, Bloomberg.com today. Shoppers ditching Colgate total amid triclosan fears. Finally got to you. Finally, hey, look, this thing causes very bad things to occur. Don't, don't, don't use it. And you listened. This is great. So the market on death is going away. Johnson & Johnson recently recalled, uh, took a look at over 100 of its products. This is after it was asked to do so upon one recall of one product. We've got to all get this under control, folks. Johnson and Johnson, of course, is Dow Chemical Corporation, Kraft, Hellman's, all of these things are all in, in bed with each other. You've got so many things that you're ingesting, so many things that you're doing that are harmful to humankind, and if left to its own devices, yeah, it's going to off the overhead. But if somebody else has a reins and you're able to stand upon your authority and you say no, no, and stop saying, well, maybe not, maybe, maybe I don't want that. Let, let's see some more, some more crap. I need, I need to see another scientific study done on that one. Especially these uh, prescription medications. The pharmaceutical industry has been responsible for the mass slaughter of humankind for a very long time. And here the sheeple have been crying out, well, okay, one study says that one causes liver damage and that one says it causes kidney failure. But we can correct that with that other medication over there that just just causes tuberculosis or uh, whatever else. We'll, do, we'll just trade off. No. No. We're not going to trade off anymore. If it's harmful to humankind, it's harmful to humankind, period, end of story, gone. It's not worth it. Human beings are so, so very precious, precious. So Israel's admitting they were using the U.S. Department of Defense. Israel, the Corporation of Israel. RT Today. Headline reads, Blindsided, Israel uses De U.S. Department of Defense. Congress ties to sideline White House on Gaza report. Congress said, it's not us, it's the Pentagon. What the heck is the Pentagon? Who's the Pentagon Congress? Who, who are these uh, entities you're pointing the finger at, Congress? It's mighty strange here as uh, we watch the fall of Rome and, and all of the Roman senators pointing fingers all around 
Alright, these are the same folks. Born of such as Caligula. And other representations of Caesar. Taking over as the Lord God landlord across the globe. So the Department of Defense and Israel are admitting ties together. The Department of Defense is, of course, under Congress. So now what? My 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 children, my falsely led sheep. Now you stop patronizing it. It's in your face. The Department of Defense and the Corporation of Israel and Congress have all been in bed together perpetrating genocide. Now here they are, they're blaming their mouthpiece. Oh, blah, blah. Now, of course, he's out golfing and out doing whatever mouthpieces do when things get tough and rough all over. They just go hide themselves under that little comfy blanket and close their eyes and and know they just know that their father's going to be protecting them while they're under fire. And sadly, as we're watching in the mainstream media, that is not the case. Obama's being painted as an idiot lazy, good for nothing. Now, of course, that evidence is that his chosen father has indeed forsaken him. I have concerns about the uh, Bolshevik Russian vibe that's going on. WTSP.com Polk Mom Charged with Child Abuse Winter Haven, Florida from the AP A Central Florida mother was arrested after police say she left her four children alone for several hours to go to a food bank They did the same thing during Bolshevik Russia The Bolshevik Russian women would be in the bread lines children would be removed from her care. Because the state had vested interests in those children. Ashley Richardson is facing four counts of neg negligent child abuse without bodily harm. That's not harm under the public law. I don't care what the rest of this story says talks about the ages of her children. Apparently the children were in a park. They didn't have any threat upon them other than one of the children getting stuck in a swing which is a normal everyday childhood experience. The leg was stuck and an officer just happened to happen by. Now, those children were not being neglected community was there. As you can see, an officer showed up. Now, these are the things that must, must, must be removed from the mind. Our children were in a park. They were safe until an officer showed up and said they were not safe there. How are they being neglected? The officer was there. Human beings were all around. That's our obligation, folks. Our obligation is not to hotline Stasi agents to come pick up each other's children because we want to feel good. Or we want to benefit. Or we're foster parents and we get paid for that. Uh, that is the action of Judas. These children 
our children were safe while their mother went to the food bank. And she should never, ever, ever, under any circumstances, be penalized for those things. Those children were not harmed. There's no harm upon those children. It's not neglect. And again, I urge our law enforcement anywhere, if you need a further example, go put yourself around lions. Go snuggle up with that male lion. And tell him how to raise their kids. See what you get. Now, the fourth generation warfare is very, very, very uh, harsh. It's uh, stressful to live under. New York Times com today did a nice report on working anything but nine to five scheduling technology leaves low income parents with hours of chaos. This is all created chaos. San Diego in a typical last minute scramble, Jeanette Navarro, a twenty two year old Starbucks barista and single mother, scraped together a plan for surviving the month of July without setting off family or financial disaster. In contrast to the joyless work she had done at the Dollar Tree store and KFC franchise, the $9 an hour Starbucks job gave Ms. Navarro, the daughter of a drug addict and an absentee father, the hope of forward motion. She had been hired because she showed up so many times, cheerful and persistent, asking for work, and she had a way of flicking away setbacks, such as a Miss Bus or a three-hour commute with the phrase, quote, I'm over it. Now we can all listen to these stories or read these stories, and all of these things seem so innocuous. Missed buses, three-hour commutes, having a hard time getting a job, being forced to get a job in the first place. And you, you don't realize the little, uh, little things, the fourth-generation warfare upon her. Newly off public assistance, she was just a few credits shy of an associate degree in business and talked of getting a master's degree as some of her co-workers were. Her take-home pay rarely topped $400 to $500 every two weeks. Since starting in November, she had set aside $900 toward a car. Her next step toward stability and independence for herself and her four-year-old son, Gavin. She makes up to $500 every two weeks. She's got to save up for a car to get her to the job that she needs to buy a car, pay rent, take care of her family. One time, uh, the, uh, the Treasury House of Lords was intended to maintain human beings on general welfare. This did not happen. Congress came in and said, nope, that's mine. We're going to do it this way, and we're going to maintain corporations on corporate welfare according to the first and second welfare theorem. We're going to put a bunch of pressure on households, community, family, and any other institution through low-intensity conflict and we're going to divide that unit. We're going to make each part of that unit their own special commercial unit and make it productive. So now you have a single mom trying her best and she gets kicked in the teeth by the same state that's kept her on her knees her entire existence. Why was her mother single? Why was her father a drug addict? Well, he just woke up one day and started doing something. No, he didn't. It took a lot of fourth generation warfare, low intensity conflict to promote that situation. As we're watching with uh, the beloved actor Robin Williams. 
He's gone through several divorces. He's spent millions of dollars in divorce, family court, probate court, legal system, royalties, patents, you name it. He's an actor. He's got a lot of stress. Wife was sleeping in the other room. His aide found him the next morning. Now his wife said he was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Uh, and that's what prompted his No, that's not what prompted his suicide. These are the hands of attorneys. The same ones that are keeping the single mother on her knees. Making sure that the inflation rate is high enough that she makes $500 every two weeks to support her and her four-year-old. Of course, through the war tactic of winning hearts and minds. She's going to be offered subsidized health care, daycare, blah, blah, blah. And that child is going to be put into a predator's hands. She can't afford daycare. And, and let me read a little bit more of this because Starbucks is absolutely not uh, innocent in all of these things because it helps promote the economic control. Quote, but Miss Navarro's fluctuating hours combined with her limited resources had also turned their lives into a chronic crisis over the clock. She rarely learned her schedule more than three days before the start of her work week. Well, why is that? Plunging her into urgent logis logistical puzzles over who would watch the boy. Months after starting the job, she moved out of her aunt's home, in part because of mounting friction over the erratic schedule, which the aunt felt was also holding her family captive. Shame on you, corporate America. Shame on you, aunt whatever, for considering time over a child, considering, you know, all of these frustrations and inconveniences over your niece and your, your, your uh, nephew. Now, these things have such a profound effect on the polarity of humankind. Now, how are we pit? This is how. You have an erratic schedule. You've already got a a millstone around your neck saying that you're a single mom, not married, 21 years old, four-year-old child, that means she was 17. The stigma of that alone is, is, is uh, so much division. What did she ever do wrong? Any other biology on this planet has sex and it's not called premarital, extramarital, affair, uh, any other term. It's not called anything. Animals have sex. Period. The only biology on this planet that has contrived to maintain that sex is illegal in any way is of course under corporate governance. Corporation doesn't find it very beneficial if you're breeding Corporation doesn't find it beneficial if you're together. Corporations do not find it beneficial at all if you take care of yourselves and there's no way to get in there and divide your family, take the garden. It's a great piece by the New York Times today. Starbuck workers scheduling hours is the link. Congress it's in some hot water. In the RT.com, Muslim American Sioux feds over placement on terror terrorist watch list. Well I'll be see the underwear bomber was the CIA the FBI admits to being an extremist, Muslim extremist Finally, a group of five Muslim American men included on the watch list of suspected terrorists maintained by the United States government 
filed a complaint on Thursday this week contesting their placement. <coughs> Excuse me. Quote, the federal government has unjustly had di disappropriate, uh, disproportionately targeted American Muslims by routinely adding their names to the terrorist screening database without affording them their rights to due process. And of course, we don't play around with due process rights or anything. But where did terror come from? Where did terror come from? Now you have JFK up there in the 1960s. And that president was assassinated. How many people knew what a president was before that? How many people knew what a president was during Hoover's administration? Wilson's administration? Lincoln's administration? All of these things are, are designed, they're a posture effect to teach people, well, you have an authority called a president, and nobody was questioning, well, oh, where did that come from? How, how did that occur? What What's a president? What, what's a congress? What's, what's this colony thing? What is this? But the minute a president is assassinated, it rings across any land and says, oh my goodness, somebody somebody in the administration just was whacked. Holy crap, we're under attack. Wait a second, you didn't ask where it came from. You didn't ask where it got its authority. You just believed that something bad just happened and it made you sad and you were part of a collective. And then you moved on and, and you hung on to this belief that there, there was ever such a thing as a president other than what Congress told you regarding that agency by a stop or an agency created the, in the mind of a third person via the actions of, of law or policy principles. You know, it, it was you know, it was spoken in, in uh, Ephesians 6. Your, your fight's not against a man. Your fight's against principalities. Rulers in high places. It never had any authority whatsoever. They just came in and said, well, that's fine. You're going to be under me now. Guess we'll be working together for a while here. Hop on on my ship. Now let me tell you something, because uh, if you need uh, daycare, you don't want to go out and buy it yourself. Let me subsidize that for you, and we'll jack up the price on it, $1,500 a week, and and uh, we'll make it so you can't afford to work. Unless you're really, really motivated to be a slave for the United States Incorporated. That's the only thing that's going to work. That's the only thing that's going to keep us afloat here, folks. That single mommy that we were just reading about, she'll end up working herself to death, just as any other, quote, American out there trying to get to a better place as she's held down in hell by congressional acts. That's not going to be any longer. I'm not going to tolerate these things. Crazy days. Got a filthy one there in the Capitol Journal. Federal charges filed against former Walworth County State's attorney charged with raping minor. The former Walworth County State's Attorney charged with raping a minor under 13 last month in Hughes County has now been charged in federal court. Christopher R. Johnson, Jensen, 34, of Selby, appeared in federal court for the first time Monday on two counts. The first was sexual exploitation of a minor and the second was distribution of material involving the sexual exploitation of a minor. Johnson faces up to 50 years in prison on the federal charges. 
Jansen was arrested July 29th on state and federal charges and soon after he was interviewed by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. A recently unsealed federal criminal complaint describes a years long sexual relationship with the young son of a family in Hughes County who were Jansen's clients. Their relationship, Jansen told FBI agents, began while he was still at the Walworth County State's Attorney according to the complaint. Over the course of two years, Jansen had many sexual encounters with the boy, eight of which he videotaped, the complaint said. Some of the encounters occurred at the boy's house. The last encounter was in 2013. Jansen resigned as a Walworth County State's Attorney in 2012. Jansen also said, according to the complaint, that he had sexual contact with some of the boy's brothers. The complaint also said that Jansen told FBI agents that he had sexual contact with at least three minors but only produced video and photos with two of the minors. Jansen told agents the complaint said that he refers to himself as a pedophile and discovered he was attracted to young boys when he was 10 or 12 years old. Jansen told the agents he has tried to manage his desires but sometimes loses control according to the complaint. And that is the reason that he put himself in the state's attorney's office because it makes it easier for the predation to occur. He's the law, remember? He's the one that puts out these uh, directives to arrest innocent parents, mess with innocent parents, promote fourth generation warfare against innocent parents so that he can prey on your children. The complaint said Jensen also Jensen joined a child pornography sharing website in 2013. Since he joined the website, Jensen had shared photos and videos of the boy with other members of the website. Some of those videos show Jensen performing oral sex on the boy. Jensen's boyfriend of 15 years, Franklin Gross, was also interviewed according to the complaint. Gross told FBI agents that Jensen's attraction to minors dated back to their days in college, the complaint said, and that Jensen would look at child pornography to satisfy his desires. So his partner knew he was preying on children, didn't do anything, just as guilty. Jensen's lawyer, Joan Powell, said she was unwilling to comment on the case at this point because she hadn't had a chance to review the evidence against her client. I don't want to say anything that's going to burn me. You know, I don't know. Quote, obviously the families on both sides are in shock and it wouldn't be appropriate for me to comment at this time, Powell said. Jensen is scheduled for a court appearance in Hughes County on August 26. He faces up to life in prison on each of these three counts in state court. Wow. ISIS Corporation located in the District of Columbia. From RT.com, ISIS controls 40% of Iraq's wheat, selling it back to government on black market. Of course, that's what Congress does. Shit, it's uh, 27 CFR 72.11, Court of Federal Regulations, Commercial Crimes. It says the federal government says it owns everything, and if you sell it, you're undercutting them. Part of those laws in there uh, relating to offenses against the laws of revenue include kidnapping and prostitution. They're saying they own your kids and only they can kidnap them by a legal process. But if you do, you're going to be charged for it and you're going to pay the federal government rent on that child. And it's the same with prostitution. You don't want to be undercutting the federal government, so come in and charge you what you owe them for undercutting them. 
see where this is going, the same figurehead, set it on everything, it's always set it on to you too, that you're, you're not allowed to sell your body, you don't want to be kidnapping each other because that undercuts the state, and that, that's what it says in 27 Code of Federal Regulations 72.11 under the definition of commercial crimes. Quote, the Islamic State, the jihadist group formerly known as ISIS, has seized around 40% of Iraq's wheat as it looked to tighten its economic grip on the country. They are also looting government grain silos to sell crops on the black market. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what Hitler did. Hitler burned down the rice tag and said, well, there's them over there. There's them over there. I'm real sorry. We, you know, can't really jack up the inflation rate in front of you guys so bad that, you know, you're paying $20 for a loaf of bread, but we can do that another way. Burning down a grocery store or now in a manufacturer works really well, doesn't it, federal government? Whatever you need to do to cut the supply to increase the demand, right? That's what a corporation does. WallStreetJournal.com control to take over security in Ferguson. It's in Missouri processors. A police clash in St. Louis suburb in wake of Michael Brown's death. And then Obama urges calm. They don't want to release the officer's name. Who directed it? It wasn't the officer. Chiefs are all up there. Not releasing the names. Officer's just the one on the beat. Who's his director? Why is there a dead 18-year-old child? Why is there racism being promoted through corporate counsel and its hiring practices? And of course, the overall. Why are there white, pink, black, brown, red human beings protesting his death while corporate counsel raises the flag of racism? Community is evidencing that they are not racist. The only racism that has been evidenced is the hiring practices of corporate counsel and the directives of corporate counsel attorneys. Now these officers are put in risk of harm as they're you know, armed to the teeth and they look as bad as Baghdad or, or Iraq or Afghanistan. That's what their daddy tells them to wear. It's protocol, policy, and agenda. Why are we clashing with law enforcement and human beings when it was the attorney that directed this stuff? DOJ course is right under the judiciary, the Department of Justice. There's some admissions that uh, certain things have been occurring and it's just so sad to watch as so many are there on the ground without division. All of humanity in that community has, has raised up and gone out to protest and stage and 
There, there are no borders. There are no colors. There are no cultural religious sex. Other than the disparity that was seen in the hiring practices of corporate counsel. Well, why is that? Well, if corporate counsel tells all these white guys from, you know, other cultures that black people are bad, then there's a higher arrest rate, right? Right? I mean, that's what they're doing. They're festering fear, promoting fear, which is the promotion of terrorism. They're terrorizing cops and citizens alike. The cops are the ones on the ground. They're the ones that are facing these armed citizens now, having to be armed because of corporate counsel's directives. I urge everybody to go back and read Congress's little slippery, tricky act, 1924, the Racial Integrity Act out of Virginia. I'll give you a little bit of a, a clue in to who's directing racism. Genocide. It's not the cops. Cops are only following policy. Cops are fearing citizens because it's all over the media that citizens were wild less than a year and a half ago, two years ago. A bunch of heathens. Just like it says in the old charters. Congress first decided to design a corporation to facilitate human trafficking and genocide. Same thing. Then it tells everybody we're racist. I'm not racist. I don't have any colors. There are no borders. You're not racist. All of our listeners out there are not racist. You got a bunch of agents on broadcasting and television programming. Promote racism. Promoting culture disparity. All of these things, I ran into more agents this week on um, telling me it's a Zion. It's no, Zion is a hill. People of Zion, these Zionists. But, but you want to look at Zionism, a political tool to redistribute via court process, legal process. And it's the same political tool as you can see in Catholicism. Judaism, Islamism, feminism, masculism, racism, sexism, environmentalism, corporatism, and any other ism. They're political tools that attorneys use to generate revenue. So if it says you hate each other, and then you believe that somewhere someone hates you, you're capable of enabling genocide through the eight stages of genocide. Classification is the first stage. Dehumanization is the next step. Convincing you that somebody else is less than you. They're disgusting or they don't have a, the right culture or language. Ideology sets. All of these things are in line with generation of revenue into attorney pockets. Who's an attorney? A turn means to pay homage to another Lord God. To turn, to pit, to polarize. Well, what's the definition of Satan? Etymology on Satan is one who plots against you. It's not a red devil. It's not anything in a red suit with horns and a nice red tail. It said a turning in the Marnie suit, driving that beamer. There's a Congress member who lives over in Sierra Leone with a bunch of children in its backyard that he could just have his pick of by which to sexually assault whenever he feels like it. It's that legislator who lives in Nigeria and the Cayman Islands who live there because they can pick children from their little catalog of children that they've kidnapped from across the globe and trafficked 
to those areas. Now, last night was fun. I was listening to the Bo and Rocco show, and Bo had been reading an article. I don't know where it is, but I'll have him send it to me, and I'll put it on the uh, TammyPepperman.org. In that article, apparently Ebola is only contracted by those that are missing the frontal lobe or primates. And of course, this could affect children as well, to small, some small degree, but they they get right over it because they don't have fully developed frontal lobe, of course. It was very profound to see because we're watching the deaths of doctors, nurses who work for the Red Cross. But we've had our dealings with these doctors. One of them killed Joseph Reynolds and one of them killed uh, Sonia Marie without mercy. And the evidence is, is overwhelmingly profound to indicate that indeed they don't have a frontal lobe. So those that are worried about contracting Ebola, go look at the research. The, the recent research it's absolutely overwhelming to indicate that only those with lacking the frontal lobe are, are really at risk for contracting Ebola. And that includes priests, psychiatrists, attorneys, general counsel, corporate counsel, uh, any of these attorneys that, well, they're missing the frontal lobe and, and the evidence is, is, is all there. It's been jokingly talking about ambulance chasers forever when the horrifying reality is they're all ambulance chasers and they chase ambulances because they get off on human harm, injury, which is, that has no place in humanity. It has absolutely no place in, in, in any life. And um, I'll be glad to see them reported on a grander scale because I've, I've had enough, absolutely had enough, and the threat of uh, this spread of Ebola is, uh, it, it's terrifying for me to know that they travel so often and they're around so many, and especially in this society of everybody has to sue everybody else and, and get one over on everybody else, although that's contrary to what Jesus taught, 1 Corinthians 6. Everybody's in those courthouses and in those hospital settings. Attorneys are the the uh, boards on on these hospitals, and um, it's it's very profound and, it, and it's very sad. Um, hmm. I I just pray that. This ends soon. I'm just so uh, tired of witnessing these things and watching as attorneys raise everything on this planet without uh, any impulse control whatsoever. That's also evidencing a lack of that from the world. Pakistan's capital today, they're protesting. According to the New York Times, and it's so beautiful to see the um, the humanity and all of these things in Ferguson, Missouri, in Pakistan. New York Times protest march bears down on the leader of Pakistan, London. Thousands of Pakistanis rallied behind the former cricketer. Imran Khan on Thursday as he led a motor cavalcade toward the capital Islamabad for a protest to demand the resignation of Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and fresh elections. Why not govern yourself? You don't need to elect anybody. Minnesota, a county in Minnesota recently, or a city, paid to elect a dog, according to reports that Bo was reading last night. And it's, it's, that was such a profound, beautiful symbol. 
why have you let all of your control and authority go to another? A doctrine of election, of course, is defined as you taking the choice of, of things that you already had before you took that choice. And upon the action of election, you're giving up either a right or a benefit. But you're never getting both. You're never the heir. So to all of our beloved in Pakistan, don't elect anybody. It's just you. Take it up. Take up your own cross and follow me, which is the human being in front of you. You know how to to behave because, well, that human being in front of you doesn't like pain and doesn't like starvation doesn't like extreme temperatures, things of that nature, and so of course those are the rules that should bind you and guide you to your destination. I don't like to be hot, I don't like to be really cold, I don't like to be hungry, and I don't like to be harmed. Let that guide you. I don't care about an emotional state of being. No one should be living in fear. No one should be living under terrorism. Definitely no one should be living under peace or pacts. Those compacts or treaty treaties contractual agreements and that's the most beautiful thing um, when it comes to the new corporate structure everyone gets rewarded according to their works if you want to uphold the public law uphold the public law and you'll get paid for it if you don't want to uphold the public law harm somebody and you'll pay for it. Done. No more credit. No more, well, I only killed that guy a little bit and, you know, I, I was, uh, I had a bad childhood and my uncle one time had this dog and Maybe it was a cow, and I forgot what I was talking about now, but anyway, I only killed that guy a little bit. No. No, no. If you harm, you harm. It's done. It's over. And the thing is, is that, did you know that it was harm? You know, self-defense is one thing if somebody's attacking you. Self-defense is not somebody attacking your car or stealing your television or stealing something of yours. Self-defense is if you're under attack, if your family's under attack. And I, and I really don't like the word threat because that can be generalized out into what we saw with uh, Joseph Biden's introduction of the Violence Against Women Act. Well, we need to make some laws to include the threat of harm. No. No. Well, he yelled at me and I was scared he was going to kill me like 20 years from now. No. No, that's about as retarded as it gets. It's another crazy soup sandwich idea. Harm is harm. Thought of harm. Thought of anything is a thought crime and it doesn't exist. And the psychiatrist comes right in and, well, wait, 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 I can tell you his intent. How's that? How's that? Well, I'm a psychiatrist. I don't give a care what you call yourself. You're, psychiatry, the action of psychiatry is licensing the mind and allowing it to 
go into those realms of thought where only concept exists and reality is gone. We're no longer going to diagnose somebody and determine their intent. When you killed somebody, did you do that in self-defense? Yes or no? The answer is no. Okay, bye. See ya. The answer is yes. What happened? Well, he or she was attacking me and I had to defend myself from a child. Okay, end of story. Gone. And, and the, the, the uh, dead guy's family has no claim against the survivor of an attack. That's not going to be questioned under the public law. And, and this applies to all of the attorneys, just in case you're, you're, you're still lost. You come upon my law enforcement and threaten to sue them for arresting you. And you're going to find yourself in many, 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 many uh, series of holes and, and uh, rabbit holes I'm going to run you through because that's not going to be tolerated either. You are not going to threaten my law enforcement for upholding the public law. Uh, that applies across the board to corporations, to former judges, to attorneys, corporate counsel, general counsel members, whoever else thinks it's best to threaten my law enforcement or military or any other institution that belongs to the United States. And, uh, of course, it's common sense. I don't have to actually speak those things because it's always been unlawful on its face. It's the action of criminal coercion. Well, my my law enforcement doesn't get paid unless they uphold the public law. So there's no possibility that you can buy them off unless you have as much money as it's going to take to arrest you, which is a lot more than uh, what you had on the heads of human beings, I can guarantee you that. We've got so much, so many things going on this week. It was such a sad loss to see Robert Williams passed. This little guy, and um, yeah, I did that years ago. There's a little guy in the news on Fox59.com. Boy 8 raises money to buy bulletproof vest plates and inspires business. Indianapolis, Indiana. Jake and Truck so it was only 8, but he's inspired the community to help buy extra pr protection for police officers. Today, Jason has raised more than $15,000. Crown Hill Cemetery presented Jason with a $1,000 donation Thursday afternoon. I am PD Chief for Height. They did during the check presentation. He says, I feel very happy. Such an adorable little guy. There's no threat to law enforcement other than attorneys and every once in a while a psychopath. And as these things wind down and there's less and less in your way, you're going to start noticing those things. But that little guy is just adorable. Just cute. Uh, Brazil's weaker than expected retail sales mean that second quarter profits probably hit negative growth. Uh, Brazil's having a, a rough time with its uh, retail sales. Stop, stop squeezing each other. I'm watching Russia and China and Japan and Brazil and Argentina. Everybody's putting the squeeze on everybody else and you know it would be just much much more efficient for business all around if you stop squeezing each other. Because honestly, in all honesty, you're always going to be the loser. We'll be right back folks. Stick around. Hi, and welcome back to the second hour of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener-supported radio station, where if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www. 
www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. You can also donate to our Tamworth web development at tammypepperman.org through the donate button just below the No Borders radio player. As always, we're simulcasting on No Borders radio at tammypepperman.org. Also find us on Skype, T. Pepperman, uh, Facebook, uh, it says Facebook.com, Tammy Pepperman, and that of course is the screen name, somebody else owns the patent on that thing, uh, that's why we do say now, it is a voice known as Tammy Pepperman. Clerk of the United States, I'm just American. Guardian.com Cliff Richard's home searched by police following sexual abuse claims. Singer says allegations which date back to the 1980s and involves boy aged under 16 is completely false. Detectives investigating a claim of sexual nature have searched a property belonging to Sir Richard Cliff Richard home in Sunningdale in Berkshire was searched after police gained a warrant. The allegation dates back to the 1980s and involves a boy who was aged under 16 at the time. Richard said the claim was completely false. The claim is that the alleged abuse took place on the child in the South Yorkshire area in the 1980s, a police spokesman person said. Because of where the alleged incident took place, the investigation is being carried out by South Yorkshire Police. In a statement, South Yorkshire Police said South Yorkshire Police has gained entry to the property in Sunningdale, area Berkshire. Officers are currently searching the property. A search warrant was granted after police received an allegation of a sexual nature dating back to the 1980s involving a boy who was under the age of 16 at the time. Quote, no one has been arrested and the owner of the property was not present. Richard said in a statement, quote, for many months I have been aware of allegations against me of historic impropriety, which have been circulating online. The allegations are completely false. Weird use of the term impropriety. Quote, up until now I've chosen not to dignify the false allegations with the responses. It would just give them more oxygen. However, the police attended my apartment in Berkshire today without notice except it would appear to, to the press. Quote, I'm not presently in the UK, but it goes without saying that I will cooperate fully should the police wish to speak to me beyond stating that today's allegation is completely completely false, it would not be appropriate to say anything further until the police investigation has concluded." End quote. The execution of the search warrant was assisted by officers from the Thomas Thames Valley Force within whose area Sunningdale Falls. South Yorkshire's inquiry is being led by Detective Superintendent Matt Fenwick. Police were unable to say immediately why a property belonging to Richard was being searched, whether he would be interviewed or whether he was a witness or a suspect or uninvolved. Richard, 73, is one of the most successful, successful British recording artists and has enjoyed a career that has spanned several decades. Police say the search is not in connection to Operation U-Tree, established after revelations over the Jimmy, Jimmy Seville scandal, which is being run by the Metro Police. No representative for Richard was available to comment immediately. The star is reported to be on holiday at a holiday home in Portugal. His routine for many years has been to spend the whole of August in the Algarve before heading to New York for the U.S. Open. As recently as 4th of August, he attended a charity event at his winery and in Albufera. He has a village nearby or village nearby. Sorry about that, folks. <clears throat> Force gets scratchy after a while. Um, I was so concerned over that little girl earlier, the single mother in Florida. Um, I pray she's taken care of. And that, uh, 
law enforcement wants to get paid, they're really going to do that. Well, Putin, everybody's rolling on Putin here, and uh, it doesn't look like it's very uh, beneficial to uh, anything, really. Putin's pipeline bypassing Ukraine is at risk amid conflict. This is from Bloomberg.com. Vladimir Putin's dream of a new pipeline to deliver Russian natural gas to the European Union without passing through Ukraine is fading amid escalating tit-for-tat economic sanctions. Now you're playing games with uh, humanity. Now I'll just lay that all on the table. So it's Ukraine and the United States Incorporated and Israel and ISIS and all of these other corporations that are the United States Incorporated and that are in the Congress. As you're basically shaking down the populace and uh, promoting trade with each other unlawful on its face, by which to do so you're evidencing not only the, the um, your terroristic intent, but also your criminal behavior right out in the open. And it's uh, it's a good idea for you little children there to just all get along because it it'll go a lot easier on you if you can figure this out and fix your mess that was made and fix what was broken. It's a lot easier than than what you have coming before you repent because it's, it's always easier if you repent and maybe back out of your little contractual uh, standings there in adversity to uh, humankind. <coughs> Dailymail.co.uk Doctor pleads guilty to murder and deaths of eight patients after they overdosed on overprescribed medication. I'm not seeing any charges against the pharmaceutical industry. Merck, Blacks, Gomez, Smith Klein. Those medications shut down the bodily function and it says this in their inserts. This will stop your breathing. This will stop your heart. And those are not overdoses. That is the action of genocide. Now, I, I would like to see more charges against the pharmaceutical industry itself for the murder of humankind. On a, on a massive scale, 42 females per day in the United States Incorporated alone are dying of, quote, prescription overdose. And if you go read all of the information on these pharmaceutical uh, poisons, you'll find out that that's the intent. Shuts down the bodily functions. Um, and it's not only through the pharmaceutical industry. You can also read about it in the Codex Elementarius because the pharmaceuticals, in, using the chemical processes of metabolism, metabolism itself, has also done the same thing by the foods that the Codex Elementarius FDA presents to the sheeple to ingest. And uh, one of those is uh, additives, food additives, are the one of the most profound uses of um, biological chemical warfare, such as benzoates, sodium benzoate, calcium benzoate, potassium benzoate. Those immediately break down into benzodiazepine as soon as you have the influence of carbohydrates. It's how you're splitting it into the oxygenated state. So if you put those in the foods, and you can read all about the uh, benzoates on Codex Elementary site. Uh, read along there. You know you're you're actually consuming what is equate or or equal to the same thing as Xanax in volume. Seroquel in higher doses. I mean, Seroquel is a, is a very damning uh, 
prescription medication. However, when, when you're eating the stuff that comes out of the FDA food pyramid, and the stuff that's coming out of the store anyway, you're consuming the, those amounts. You're metabolizing those things, and that's why you're sleepy all the time. That's why you're tired. That's why you feel so so exhausted. And you know you can sleep for ten hours at a time, and when you wake up, you're still foggy. It's not just fluoride. It's not just any one thing. It's in the majority of the things that you're consuming that are sold as commodities. You don't need to back away from the food pyramid, back away from the Codex Elementarius, back away from Congress, stop listening to Congress, tell you how safe something is on one side of it and out the other side of the mouth, how dangerous it is. It's just a uh, constant. So this doctor pled guilty. He's going to spend eight years in prison on behalf of the pharmaceutical industry took one for the team but it wasn't him I mean I had personal interaction I hate that word personal but uh, that guy that tried to kill me he was a podiatrist he was a foot surgeon and um, before he went rogue he wasn't rogue he got letters from Medicaid and Medicare that said if he didn't prescribe narcotics to his patients in 30, 60, and 90 day prescriptions, they were going to cut his Medicare and Medicaid funding for him. And Doc kept writing out five day prescriptions because as a surgeon he did not want his patients addicted to those things. And about a year went by of being hammered on by the CMS system <clears throat> when they got the DEA in there to charge him and vilify him in front of the community through, of course, the court of public opinion presented by the media. It happens every day, folks. And this doctor was just, it, it seems like he was just one of the ones that agreed, okay, I'll do whatever you want. Or perhaps not, because I witnessed it with my own eyes. Question everything, and if you see a fall guy that shouldn't be in the chute, question everything. He's, uh, Corporations need to be held accountable for what they've done in mass. In mass. Andrew Cuomo, he's an interesting guy. He's in the news again. Cuomo's visiting Israel, joins growing U.S. list. It's high season for travel to the Holy Land. The previous New York City Mayor Michael, Michael R. Bloomberg squeezed into an L. Al commercial flight and an everyman's show of support. Members of Congress eager to report back to their constituents are carving time out of their schedules. And on Wednesday, Governor Andrew M. Cuomo of New York, who was resolutely avoided anything resembling the resume burnishing travel of a presidential hopeful arrived here for a state visit that included a stop at Western Wall. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, eager to showcase the support of prominent American leaders, set aside time for a meeting and remarks from side-by-side -side lecterns. These folks really, really, really like the Corporation of Israel and they love to present to you that the false Jew might be somebody living in a geographical state. You are looking at the false Jew. Congress has always been the false Jew. Of course, the governors are all under Congress, chief priests and elders. United States Incorporated and its show. Huge marquee.
course, the, the report, the CIA report hasn't come back yet. Uh, regarding the torture report, I'm waiting for that one. I'm waiting for that one. Bo has a new video up on Bo North Entertainment called A Turn of Rights. I suggest you go see that. It's a really good one. I was listening to the Doors writers on the storm the other day as well. Oh, come on. No more commercials. The, um, the, one of the most wanted females was arrested this week. Sorry, and I can't play that because of the commercials. So I'm not going to associate it with, um, any news entity because I'm not going to promote them if they have a play button anymore because it's an irritant and if I go to read something I want to read it I don't want to hear anything I can push a play button if I want it to play lone female fugitive on US Marshals most wanted list was captured she's been human trafficking for many years finally got nailed it's good to see It's interesting from uh, Wall Street Journal how Israel outflanks the White House on Gaza. The White House is just a presentation, folks. Congress. Gaza is another corporation. I mean, all of these things are, are traded under Congress. They promote these presentations. They promote war. They promote genocide and human trafficking by which to generate revenue into their coffers and keep their corporations afloat. When there's too much overhead, of course, you get general counsel out wielding vials of, of Ebola and making themselves sick on accident. They were wanting to off the populace and it backfired, didn't it? We saw the same thing occur during Bolshevik Russia and Nazi Germany. The same exact thing as the United States Incorporated has gone into third world status we've got so many homeless and hungry and those that are on welfare and social security and those that are unemployed are state employed How, how's that going to work for fixing overhead well it didn't during Bolshevik Russia and in fact indeed the Bear Corporation came in, in 1928 and said how terrible it was. Came into the uh, Congress's World Courts and it says, look, we, Bear Corporation, bearish, we've got so much crap over our heads right now. We've got all of these people on state employee, federal employee, welfare, social programs, medical industry, psychological in industry. We want you, the court, to indemnify Poland. Get them to pay for it. And what you saw is Nazi Germany was a corporation cutting its overhead. And of course, that was back in the 30s and 40s. Come a little bit forward to 1974. Henry Kissinger, Dr. Henry Kissinger. And if you need me to locate you, came in to the United States Incorporated, put its feet on the ground and said, uh, excuse me here, but uh, depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign policy. By 1975, Henry Kissinger had established the Office of Population Affairs, which is the Department of Health and Human Services, by which to do so. Now, it wasn't Ernst Rudin that time. It wasn't Margaret Sanger again. It was Dr. Henry Kissinger, Memorandum 200 to the National Security Council. I said, well, got a bunch of overhead. We need to off a whole bunch of human beings. And that should be our first priority. 
in that memorandum and so that should occur until 2035 then we'll just even out from there and we won't have so much corporate overhead so excuse me no that was our lawsuit against the United States Incorporated initiated back in 2012 2013 and we said look this is your guys' debt what the hell are we doing here I can burn down a thousand corporations and there's still no loss of life but on the flip side you've got John Kerry there promoting genocide and, and massive loss of life to secure the security of national corporations foreign states and we're watching it all over again if it doesn't stop UK prisoners detained in cells without power or running water for two days as reported on the RT a British pr prison has been slammed for holding inmates in cells without running water or electricity for over two days. The facility is run by Circo, private corporation. Land Greenwald on Iraq. DemocracyNow.org says, quote, is U.S. humanitarianism only summoned to control air oil rich areas? Well, in a way, first, it's Congress that's perpetrating the war, killing everybody, and then Congress comes in and plays cleanup or reconnaissance. And that's what you see as humanitarianism. But it was Congress who was killing the human beings in the first place, and it's the same Congress or the UN, whatever it calls itself today, that comes in to then provide humanitarian aid to the same people it just raised. That's a great example of the use of winning hearts and minds. And the explanation, you can find that wiki. During the Malaysian emergency, they did the same thing. And now Malaysian women that bought into the hearts and minds and they accepted the food stamps and the welfare benefits are now in prison and they get to visit their babies about an hour a day. Because they took the silver while they were being slaughtered and massed by the United States Incorporated. The bull is a high risk in Kenya, who warns? It's on RT.com. The headline. There's something near and dear to all of us from sbs.com EU alleged sexual assault of asylum seeker children detailed by detention staff these drawings by the children are so sad one of them says I hate my life why well, they've survived perpetrated by Congress and Congress's Stasi agents across the globe. I can guarantee you. You can run, you can buy your way out of it right now. I guarantee you. You will not escape the public law. There is no escaping the public law. I will see you in hell. Allegations of sexual abuse, physical and verbal assaults of asylum seeker children by Nauru Detention Center staff have been detailed as part of submissions into a national inquiry. This came out this morning, uh, afternoon, sorry, four hours ago. Staff employed at the Nauru Immigration Detention Center have detailed allegations of multiple violations of human rights in its submission to the National Inquiry into Children in Immigration Detention. Submission is among more than 
200 submitted to the inquiry launched by the Australian Human Rights Commission. Of course, the Human Rights Commission has always been the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Union. Those are the folks on the ground perpetrating the war, helping out Congress. There are now sects of former Teamsters that want out, that fear for their lives because they know what the Mafia is. And uh, years ago, the same Teamsters were killing people like Jimmy Hoffa, making them disappear. They're potting people like Al Capone in prison, making sure they got syphilis. Stuff like that that corporations do on the, on the back end of things to make their businesses work. Al Capone, he was, he was running booze for Anheuser-Busch. Anheuser-Busch, of course, was a member of corporate counsel. And when he was making much more than Caesar thought he should be making and thought he should have, why Al Capone was taken out and called a criminal. End of story. It's the same thing they've done with every other uh, political adversary. These, uh, all of them, Warren Jeffs. We've got, uh, years ago, Waco, Ruby Ridge. All of these things that are in competition with the federal state are removed by the federal state because they do not want competition. That is not a government, it's a corporation. It's acting as thugs. Just thugs. There's nothing else. There's no other word for it. Just thugs. Bullies. That no longer have any more air in their balloons. Sick and twisted. Yeah? I just... The bullet thing. Um, CDC has gone back and forth. Who's gone back and forth about the uh, just the uh, level of contagion, uh, which is very concerning. Uh, MRT, Ebola, high risk in Kenya. Who warns? The World Health Organization. I said that Kenya is at high risk of the spread of the deadly Ebola virus because it is a major transport hub with several flights a day to West Africa where the disease is running riot. This is the most serious warning to date that the disease could spread to East Africa. So far it has been limited to West Africa where it has ravaged Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia, killing more than 1,000 people. Nigeria's African Nigeria, Africa's most populous country, is the latest to be hit. The country of over 150 million people has now seen three deaths from Ebola. Although health checks have been stepped up in Nairobi airport in recent weeks, the Kenyan government has said it will not ban flights from the four countries hit by Ebola because of the porous borders between African countries. There are more than 70 flights a week between Kenya and West Africa. Well, we do not recommend a ban of flights because of porous borders, said Kenyan Health Cabinet Secretary James Makaraya. Porous borders. Can't afford to shut down the airlines, so we might as well just allow some more human beings to die. We don't want to cut into our bottom line here. How is that working out for everybody? How, how's your government working out for you? Because, you know, it appears like they're looking out for uh, number one there. There's more than 70 flights a week between Kenya and West Africa. We don't want to cut the flights or anything to save humanity. You're going to put a hole in my pocket. You don't want me to lose money, do you? I mean, come on here. You, you, you honestly believe that human beings are more important than a dollar bill? You've got to be kidding me, says Africa, and the U.S. Incorporated. And they're doing the same thing in Russia. We don't want to stop the war because, you know, if we cut out all of the flights and 
and all of the imports and exports and everything from Russia, that, that'll hurt us. Financially, that'll cripple me. Okay. Go into financial ruin, but leave humanity alone. I do not care what happens to the corporations. I do not care what happens to the flights. I do not care what happens to Boeing. I do not care. I care what happens to human beings. And if you don't want to protect human beings, then you will be forced to at your detriment. I will pull your corporation apart and part it out to all of the human beings that you've been abusing and slaughtering that have lost at your hand and you will be forced to witness these things just for, well, just because I've had enough and you need a lesson because apparently when you heard human beings crying you didn't listen and when you saw them dying in the streets you didn't care and when you forced them into servitude you thought it was funny wow. I'm an evil 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 adversary if you're not a human, I'm not your friend. And I have a wild imagination, lots of time, and plenty of focus. You're going to watch as everything you love is taken from you and returned to humanity and life itself. From the dailymail.co.uk, I was raped age four by top aide to Thatcher. Woman claims she was abused by senior conservative MP who visited notorious guest house, guest house with pedophile Cyril Smith. Susie Henderson, 48, said she was raped by Sir Nicholas Fairborn, Tory politician, was Solicitor General for Scotland and Perth, and Ross MP. MP died in 1995, age 61, and was a favorite of Margaret Thatcher. Miss Henderson said she was abused by the late father, a prominent QC. New evidence suggests Fairborn visited Elm Guest House. Property is the focus of the investigation into alleged pedophile rings in the 1980s. And of course, this all goes back to the Franklin scandal. This goes back to the Small Government Loan Service, which is now known as the Small Business Administration. They're getting loans based on this trafficking by which to traffic. The Conspiracy of Silence came out years ago and Congress banned it from airing on the Discovery Channel. Well, why would Congress ban something that evidence Congress was raping and molesting children? Well, if you can't, you know, figure that out by yourself, I'll tell you why. That's like asking Charles Manson to investigate himself for the crime of murder. It's about as crazy as a soup sandwich. <clears throat> I'll continue reading. A woman last night claimed she was raped at the age of four by a senior Tory MP who was one of Margaret Thatcher's closest allies. Susie Henderson waived the right to anonymity to describe the appalling abuse she alleges was inflicted on her by Sir Nicholas Fairborn, the late conservative politician who was appointed Solicitor General for Scotland by Mrs. Thatcher when she became Prime Minister, has been linked to the child abuse scandal threatening to engulf Westminster. Last month, evidence came to light which suggested Nicholas may have visited the Elm Guest House, which serial abuser Cyril Smith attended. Property in Barnes, southwest London, is the focus of Scotland Yard investigation into an alleged established pedophile ring in the 1980s. The evidence emerged weeks after Home Secretary Theresa May announced a Hillsborough style inquiry into claims of pedophile activities in Parliament and other public institutions. Now Ms. Henderson, 48, has told the Mail that 
she was raped as a young child by Sir Nicholas and that she also suffered years of sexual assaults by her late father, prominent Scottish QC Robert Henderson, who was a friend of the MP. She said of Sir Nicholas, quote, I hated that man, adding, quote, more than I hated my father, he really, he just really wasn't a nice man. I wanted to acknowledge that my father in Fairborn did something very evil, not just to me. There are other children out there. Miss Henderson first made her allegations against Sir Nicholas, famous for his outspoken views, frock coats, suits, and part, part and trousers, and her father under the alias of Julie Axe in 2000, but an initial police investigation did not lead to any charges. Korshna. John Kerry and John Cornyn, Holdren, Joseph Biden, Patrick Leahy, back in 2009, would have been Teddy Stevens. They would have all stopped these things from being promoted in the media. Sir Nicholas, flamboyant MP for Perth and Kinross, died in 1995, age 61, twice married. He once described his pastimes as, quote, making love, ends meet, and people laugh, end quote. The MP from 1974 to 95 was a favorite of Mrs. Thatcher because of his right-wing views and his noisy express adoration of her. He once claimed to enjoy special chemistry with the former prime minister and wrote in the Spectator magazine about her, quote, sexually attractive, no, but certainly bonnie. And quote, Miss Henderson, whose father died in 2012, age 75, claims Sir Nicholas first abused her at one of her father's parties at his Edinburgh home. She said, quote, we were in the kitchen. I was maybe four years old. I could have been younger. Of course. Farnham. Senator Farnham. Representative Farnham. Illinois. He said he likes him young. He doesn't like him any older than 10 to 12. He likes him 6 to 9. He likes him real, real, real young. He doesn't want any children that look like adults. He wants him real young, because that's what politicians love. Caesar loves him real young. Nice and juicy, fresh meat. Especially if they put enough force against a whole populace of single mothers that they can rip children left and right through the, ma the legal industry and court process and remove their fathers from their ability to protect them at the same exact moment in time. I mean, that's the name of the game. That is the name of the game. Read, Go read what that sick rat bastard Farnham does to kids and it, it, he's still out he's got a restraining order that says he can't have his computer and his wife's supposed to be babysitting all of his electronic equipment that that's real smart isn't it she's still with him even though he admitted to someone he thought was a kid that he likes him real young I think that's a great idea to give her the lock and keys to prevent him from sexually abusing other children since, you know, she already knows that he's like that and didn't leave him. So apparently she enjoys that type of thing. Now, under the public law, he would not be out. He would have already been used as an eraser, maybe, or something to plug the hole in Syria or under the public law I could sell them to China for organ harvesting I don't care what happens to pedophiles that have been preying on children whatever is necessary and most beneficial to business She says she was just four or five years old at the time and remembers the pungent smell of his feet. Sobbing, she said she was not sure how many times Sir Nicholas abused her, but says it was a lot, adding even one is too much. Last night, Sir Nicholas' daughter, Charlotte 50, told the mail that while she did not know whether her father had carried out the, carried out the alleged abuse, she very much doubted it. She said, I don't really want to know anything about it. I would be very surprised by that. 
the claims made against her father, but he's dead. He's not here to defend himself. Well, that's when children come out because they're they're no longer in fear. It took her 48 years and his death to allow her that. And I, I witnessed that when I was younger, very, very young with my one of my grandmothers who was a victim of beatings constantly and um, years after he passed away she was still having nightmares and she still had the thought that at any moment in time he was going to be there to do whatever he used to do to her. These things, you know, and it, there, there should not be these levels of fear. And if you know that all politicians are rapists, get rid of them. All politicians. Nancy Schaefer, back in 2010, was murdered after she came out and did a report to Congress about the corruption of child protection industry. And she was killed. That shut her up, didn't it? And the rest of Congress goes on as if nothing happened and continues to slaughter, rape, pillage, and raise humankind. Congress is Barabbas. Congress is Satan. Congress is Agamemnon. Congress is Rome. Congress is Caesar. That's what it's always done. It makes profit when it breaks children through the action of eros or taking something in lust. And those children go on to produce because they're going to be diagnosed. Oh, I'm depressed. I have PTSD. I have anxiety now. I, I have poor um, self-esteem. I have a poor vision of myself. Whatever else. Congress gets off on all of that. It's their medical industry. It's their psychological industry. So if one of its actors rapes a child, it makes money on the other end. That's the business model. Now, I know that our Revolution Radio and Tammy Pepperman and No Borders were all family stations. But I'll tell you, if I had my, my choice and my ability... I would say many other choice things that would probably offend the majority of our listeners. Because I would like to see them staked. And if it was under the public law to stake them and stick them on sticks, that would have already been done. And I would be known as Vlad the Impaler because I would not stop until all of them were on those stakes so that they could teach each other not to harm my children. If that's what it's going to take is cutting their arms and legs off or their heads off in front of each other, then that's what's going to happen. Whatever has to occur to stop the onslaught will occur. Our law enforcement has been given full authority to act in accordance to the public law. If they have to raise a the military, they're going to do that. If they have to raise more law enforcement, they're going to do that. Whatever it takes, it's going to happen. There is no more impediment. There is no more waiting. We jumped through all of those hoops and got rid of them, and there are no hoops now. And so in between me and you, psychopath, there's absolutely nothing, and just to give you the heads up, this is your running start. If you fail to run, and you stick around now, it's not on me. And I'll tell you, uh, you've got a target on your forehead, because you've been harming children. The Atlantic today, um... All of this with the, um, oh, 
Ferguson and uh, State Patroller on the scene. There was a question posed in all of the media today that I don't want to leave without speaking about. The headline from the Atlantic.com How the war on terror has militarized the police over the last 10 years. Law enforcement officials have been begun to look and act more and more like soldiers. Here's why we should be alarmed. At around 9 a.m. on May 5, 2011, officers with the Pima County, Arizona Sheriff's Department Special Weapons and Tactics, or SWAT, team surrounded the home of 26-year-old Jose Guerra, a former U.S. Marine, a veteran of two tours of duty in Iraq, to serve a search warrant for narcotics. As the officers approached, Guerra lay sleeping in his bedroom after working the graveyard shift at a local mine. When his wife, Vanessa, woke him up, screaming that she had seen a man outside the window putting a gun at her, Guerra grabbed the AR-15 rifle and instructed Vanessa to hide in the closet with their four-year-old son and left the bedroom to investigate. Within moments and without Guerra firing a shot or even switching his rifle off of safety, he lay dying, his body riddled with 60 bullets. A subsequent investigation revealed, it revealed that the initial shot that prompted the SWAT team barrage came from a SWAT team gun, not Guerra's. Guerra reports later revealed had no criminal record and no narcotics were found at his home. And this is corporate counsel now. I don't want anybody presenting in their mind the illusion that this is just rogue law enforcement. They're directed by corporate counsel and corporate counsel has to be held accountable for these things. That's where the information comes from. Sadly, the Guerra is not alone. In recent years, we've witnessed a proliferation of incidents of excessive military style force by police SWAT teams and often, which often make national headlines due to their sheer brutality. Why has it become routine for police departments to deploy black guard body armored SWAT teams for routine domestic police work? The answer to the question requires a closer examination of post-9-11 U.S. foreign policy and the war on terror. The CIA was the underwear bomber. Jeff Tifolo was slaughtered because he was munitions expert. We were working together back in 2010. He was killed in August. He knew that the World Trade Center was not taken down by an airplane. Now this, these were inside jobs to promote terror to the sheeple so that you would rely on your corporate oppressors, which are attorneys. And these cops that are all dressed up have been decommissioned. They're, they're no longer with commission under their state. The attorneys no longer have any authority. Their commission's gone. They lost their commission through the Treasury after the evidence that they were perpetrating genocide and human trafficking upon humankind. Things will turn around soon, folks. But you've got to be aware and realize that the majority of law enforcement going to law enforcement because they want to protect humanity. Now, behind the scenes, we've been at war for so long with the United States Incorporated. We actively engaged in June, June 30th, and still, still, our law enforcement protects us and the rest of humanity. And it's been a long journey. These attorneys come in with threats. If you do that, we're going to do this. Okay, sue me. Bring it on, but do not threaten my law enforcement for upholding the public law. And our poor law enforcement has been so threatened by these attorneys, these, these satanic things without authority. And it, it's, it's hilarious because they're, they're talking to the guys with guns. And the most ironic is that the attorneys are the ones that arm them. Now the situation in Ferguson looks like it's all calm down now. Um, state police have been there today. They were protesting along with the human beings. Um, I think that we just need to take care of corporate counsel there. And of course the governor has his influence. And we'll see what's going on. Um, 
in the next few days, and of course we'll be back on tomorrow night, TammyPepperman.org with Public Law, and Saturday, excuse me, Saturday night with uh, Leaving the Farm as well, but I don't know what to call it now, because it's certainly not Leaving the Farm, we've left the farm, and um, now we're on the downhill slide, and uh, again, it's such a tragic loss to uh, to have lost Robin Williams. Such a sad, sad loss. Yeah, he was actually a genius. He was a linguist. He knew many, many different langu languages. And, uh, it's sad to see the attorneys after his estate now. Um, all in all, it looked like the attorneys had had their hand in the pot prior to his passing. Again, it's reported today he was diagnosed with Parkinson's recently. Suicide comes after family court cases, probate court cases, taxation, royalty, all of these things, as well as the day to day stress of living on this planet with the plague known as attorneys running loose and um very sad day indeed and then back to back we just saw the loss of Casey Kasem and the terrorism of Jean Kasem through the use of attorneys and doctors um Carrie Kasem is married to a very prominent doctor and, uh, well, you look into the attending physician, and there's another physician there that was attending at his death, and it's no surprise that um, Casey Kasem's body has gone missing because there's probably evidence that uh, comes along with that to know that what killed him and, and um, how he died of this, whatever diagnosis. Bottom line was the it was already written on the wall when the court came in and said that, you know, end of life procedures and doctors just dose them off with uh, lethal injection medications. Same medications that are used in the prison setting to uh, kill hardcore prisoners are used in every hospital across the United States, Incorporated, across the globe. Same prescription medications Ativan, Seroquel, Adderall, Haldol, Demerol. Um, Oxycontin, oxycodone products, morphine, all of these things shut down the lungs. They shut down the bodily functions. That's their purpose. And it um, doesn't matter how you color it up or how you put a bow on it, it's still genocide. It's always going to be genocide. There's no reason for medications that cause death and the shutting down of. Uh, life functions for human beings and again that comes with accountability um, and personally when I spoke to that doctor that was killing Joseph Reynolds he didn't want to talk to me anymore after I notified them that I had knowledge you know and, and perhaps if humanity stood up and started questioning those same things um, excuse me, but what are you giving my mother now? You're, you're giving her Ativan? You know, if all of humanity started to stand up and question those things, would these doctors still do this? The attorneys were working without any kind of impediment against them because everybody was unaware of what the attorneys were actually doing. Once everybody was aware, the attorneys started backing off. And, and now, and, and indeed, it's the funniest thing, Wisconsin Governor, um, what's his name, uh, surrounded by law enforcement. He doesn't want to come out of the closet. He knows what's coming to him, and he's spending a lot of money to keep uh, law enforcement around him so he can't be arrested. But that's funny. That's funny. It's not like, you know anything that I've seen in, in the past and um, again to all of those that, that know God and, and know Jesus take comfort in these times 
look at everything and see what's actually going on and, and uh, you know, refer to the Bible. It's written in there. Love you, everybody. Be well.